our own bad deeds. Anyone who has been guided by Allah, he's indeed guided indeed. And who, anyone who has been misguided, you will never find a guardian, a protector. We bear witness, ashadu, excuse me, individually we bear witness, ashadu, and collectively, nashadu, that we bear witness that there's no deity except Allah, no entity except Allah, the only one without partner, la sharika la, and we bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and his servant. We ask Allah, Allahumma, to send salutations and prayers and peace and blessings upon his prophet Muhammad, his servant, and upon his family and all his companions, Amabad, and what follows of that excellent salutations. Dear believers, people of the heart, we ask and greet you with assalamu alaikum. This auspicious occasion we call the Juma also coincides with this other auspicious occasion, which is the day of Arafat. We here have today a, a, a collective uh, moment in which hearts have come together, which Allah says in Quran, Allah bi dhikri la tatamin in kalub. Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find tranquility. Didn't just say the mind. Allah says directly that hearts find tranquility. And we know that Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, the model man, the model human example, received this Qur'an, this revelation on his heart. Muhammad the Prophet, the model man, he is an example for us all. And for believers who are assembling, as I was saying at the beginning, we're assembling a delegation of individuals, international representation here, from all around the world, visitors on behalf of ex international exchanges with our United States government and others who are visiting us from around the world and from various places throughout the United States. We greet you with that universal greetings. We greet you with the Arabic greetings of marhaban bikum. We greet you with, the, uh, with, with, with, with joining us at this historic masjid that's an 85-year-plus masjid built by the individuals who were developing and were a part of the indigenous community of this land. And so, dear beloved believers, Muslims, we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one with our partners, and that Allah is the one who deserves the praise. He is the one who has created me, and he is the one who will guide me. What does this mean, brothers and sisters, as we talk to our collective selves. That means that all instructions, all guidance, all um, elements of our human life is directly guided by the one who created the heavens and the earth. And Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, it is recorded by a tradition that says that Muhammad the Prophet said that, that, that you have, our, my companions are like stars. You can be guided by each and every one of them. That means with model behavior, model example, model exemplary example, you can be guided by each and every one of us. And so this day of Arafat, this day of standing, this day of witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to be of that assembly in which we can see model behavior. Allah ta'ala says in Quran in Surah Fatir, ayat 15, for those who are looking for the sourcing of it, he says, Ya ayyuha nasu, Antum afukara illa Allah wallahu huwa al ghaniyu hamid. And Allah gives us this beautiful verse in Surah Al Fatiha, one of my favorite verses, but the whole Quran is, is my favorite. But in this moment, Allah says in, in, in Surah Al Fatiha, O mankind, you are those in need of Allah, while Allah is the free of need, the praiseworthy. O mankind, you are those in need of Allah. What does this mean, brothers and sisters? We are empty. We are simpletons without the guidance of Allah. We can't accomplish anything without this world, without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be of those who submit. The universe itself is the creation. The universe itself and the creation itself is the womb of the knowledge. And the universe is the one itself who firstly submitted. The universe itself existing, created for us. The whole existence of what we see out into the heavenly abode, the physical existence. 
Allah nu al sabawati wa la adar. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The whole existence was created for you to be of a utility. And we know based off of studies that have been out there in the world. A recent fascinating analysis I saw in the New York Times also corroborated in an interesting journal in Harvard that talked about that forests themselves have their own social networks. Forests themselves, the creation itself, are communicating. And we know that Allah says, a goodly word like a goodly tree, firmly rooted, having establishments, and its branches going out, summarizing for the sake of time. It goes out. So in the creation itself, we should be able to ponder. If scripture is not being of use to us, then why do we have scripture itself? So you should be able to go into scripture and see your life. You should be able to go into the scripture itself and be able to see its utility. And it gives another example uh, in the Islamic tradition. Sometimes seen as, uh, I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's weak, but there are a number of hadiths that are in our tradition that stay in there because they don't contradict the Quran, they don't cause any confusion, but they bring good social bonds. So this one verse says, uh, this one uh, uh, tradition in Islam uh, uh, that has various uh, interpretations, but one says, Min arafa nafsuhu fakar arafa rabbahu. The one who knows himself knows his Lord. Dear beloved believers, Muslims, knowing yourself, knowing your path, knowing why you exist is part of your journey in this life. The same way that the creation knows its role. The creation itself knows that it has to submit. It knows its, it, it knows its role, it knows its place, it knows its mode of prayer as the Quran says. So too in ourself, as you journey to find yourself, as you go inward, as you seek to find the path that Allah has sent forth, find that path that Allah wants for us. And let us not be of those who go astray. Allah says in Surah Al-Isra, وَمِنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَمَّا فِي هُوَ فِي الْآخَةِ وَأَمَّا وَعَدِلُوا سَبِيلًا But those who are blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter and most astray from the path. Dear beloved believers, Muslims, people of the heart, let's remember what Allah has given us in this time, this moment. For there's no other time like this present. We could have been any other place. You could have chosen to engage in any other business activity. You could have been in any other place in the world, but you chose to come into the divine presence to witness in saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad on Rasulullah. That is the first acknowledgement that Allah is supreme. That everything in creation praises Allah, exalts Allah, prostrates to Allah, obeys Allah, submits they hear and they obey without question except for some human beings and jinn when you turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you become an anomaly to the created order brothers and sisters Allah has created this existence for us it all connects the sun itself rose the same sun that was down and has been around for Musa alayhi salam for Ibrahim our father Abraham on this occasion of Arafat for Muhammad the prophet doing its job and so there is a dear should I say a cosmic monotony there is a heavenly monotony of life every day waking up for Fajr prayer I rose at Fajr I went for a long run settled the nerves I came home and prepped for fasting and so as we do this, brothers and sisters, there's a beautiful reputation, there's a beautiful path, a sacred path that we are engaging upon that not just you're doing it alone, though we are on this path um, individually, we have a collective journey in which we are going to the final abode. The scholars of Islam give us these two beautiful verses of the Quran. Quran. <laughs> What is this? But seek the means, the final abode, the next life, in that first point I mentioned. But do not forget your share of this material world. Don't become monastics. There's no monastics in Islam. Don't become those who only want to be in an, off into a tradition of simply doing things individually. 
We are a social creation and a social community needing social relationships. And also that second beautiful verse in Dua. Our Lord, give us good in this world. Give us good in the hereafter and protect us from the fire. These scholars say this is spiritual balance. Much more tough seer we can give on this. But that spiritual balance is something you're turning for. Come back toward the sacred natural order that Allah has created us to be. Don't become an anomaly. Don't become an, uh, an abstract idea. Fall back to the path in which Allah has given us so that we can understand our purpose in this life. And as we talked about this monotony, as we talked about this every day, getting up in this engagement, it might seem like it's a drag. It might seem like it's, there's no purpose to this. But only with the words of Allah, consuming it, digesting it, meditating on it, <clears throat> and doing it any, every single day, even if you've had a life of all sorts of challenges of sin. My, sin, my challenges are not the same as yours. Your, ch your challenges that you will face are based off of you, as Allah has predetermined as he brought us all into this world, whether you're 1, 5, 10, 20, 80, 90 years of old. Engage in this sacred monotony in the words of one of the great American writers and thinkers, he says, we measure our life in coffee grounds. One scoop at a time. The Quran complements that. It exalts that. Embraces that too as well, brothers and sisters. And lit our life in this day of Arafah in getting to know one another. In this get day of assembly, let us use this Arafah as a time to go deeper in ourselves, to be self-reflective, to be honest with ourselves, to constantly purify ourselves, to constantly go inward, to ask ourselves, am I being the best that I can? Allah says in Quran, Fakhim wajhaka lil deen hanifa, fitr lati fitr et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And establish yourself and turn yourself, your whole orientation, your face, Toward that natural life, that fitrah, following the pattern of the Salat al Ibrahim, following the way of Ibrahim Hanifa. This example, this modern person who had timeless, what, and I say modern person, uh, a, a prototype. Prophet Ibrahim isn't just a single individual. Mu Musa alayhi salam isn't just a single individual. Muhammad the Prophet, the model man. <clears throat> who comes at it as an example, <clears throat> and you can hear the parchment in my throat for the lack of water today. And you can, <clears throat> and the model man comes here as an example for us, brothers and sisters. And so, <clears throat> as that prototype, as Muhammad the prophet, we should see in ourselves that model Muhammad lifestyle. How are we living into that Muhammad the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam lifestyle? How are we making the provisions for our lives? Not just for now, but that which is to come. How are we investing back to make sure that we master those which we know? I'm a historian by training, so I'll fall back to that for a second. And in the classical Islamic tradition, in the modern era, we're used to so much information overload. In a digital world, <clears throat> we're so used to having books at our disposal. And in the historical period, it took time, sometimes months, where individuals would have a copyist who would write a book, and then someone would savor that book, and they would digest the information from that compilation. In the modern world, we have so much information given to us that we miss the mark of understanding that high-impact information that's given to us for small amounts. Many of you all will remember the 40 hadiths that are out there. Ibn Kathir has written extensively. It was Bukhari who said, I learned so many hadiths that I became confused. The great hadith master and teacher, I learned so many hadiths that I became confused. There's a lesson in this, brothers and sisters. Enjoy what you have learned and apply it. For those who have been around this community for over 85 years plus, you will remember this, this development, this word. Only in the application does the true value lay. Only in the application of what you have developed and subscribed and cultivated does the true value lay. Consuming lots of information and not knowing what exactly and how to apply it, the right moment, the right time, it's not 
of direct solution for you. And so I mention that, brothers and sisters, because uh, in this modern world, we have so much information that we miss how to digest what we do know. Apply what you know, brothers and sisters. Learn and develop and be on that quest of knowledge. The most often repeated word outside of Allah in the Quran is, uh, is knowledge, ilm, alam, mu'allam, ta'alim, etc. And so, brothers and sisters, don't squander this experience. Our Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, all these beautiful wisdom that we've learned from our teacher, our guide. Like our parent, I love Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, more than I love my own parents. And I love my parents so much. Because Muhammad has given us an instruction. On this Arafah day, as we witness this day convening, Muhammad said, did I give you this instruction? He gave a whole list in his, ser in his sermon. And in this sermon, this final sermon, he talked about the rights of protecting each other, equality, social justice, human rights, etc. Talking about the rights of both Arab and non-Arab, etc. Making sure that there's an egalitarian, an equal, equitable community. Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, said, most of my ummah will live between 60 and 70 years. Some of us live a little bit more, some of us live a little bit, yet, a, a little bit less. But what should that tell us, brothers and sisters? Don't squander the moment. Apply what you have in this time. Allah has not guaranteed any of what us much more than what we have in this Juma at this moment, at this time, brothers and sisters. Let us embrace this Hajj as we are in this Hajj of just not those who are physically there, but let's enjoy this Hajj so that we empty our mind and only put back the words of a God, only put the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back into this vessel that Allah has given us for those 60, 70 years plus. Brothers and sisters, let this Hajj be a time of recalibrating, not just those who are there, recalibrating how you engage in your life, engaging in this sacred monotony. Allow your roots, your foundation of Islam, as I began with the trees, allow your roots to be cultivated, moist, developed, so that it can survive like those redwoods in the Pacific Northwest. Allow those roots of your time to survive like that palmetto tree in the South Carolina swamps right now in the, as warm climate. Brothers and sisters, allow this season that we're in, that happens to be summer, like we have fall, spring, or summer, winter seasons, Allow us to allow our Islamic life to be firmly rooted. Let us not be, as Surah Al-Fatir says, those who oppress their own souls, who are dhalimi li nafsihi. Let us be of those who are sabak bil qayrat, who go over time, who seek to constantly be in Allah's presence, who constantly seek to strive for perfection. Allah says in, the, Allah says in, a, a, in, in a, an authentic hadith, Muhammad the Prophet, in Allah katab al hasana ala kulli shay'in. I have prescribed excellence in all things. And let's seek that middle way that Muhammad the Prophet, that Allah has given us. Be of those who are muqtasid, taking the middle path, not going too far to the left and too far to the right. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirah hasanatan wa kina adha binar. Dear beloved believers, <clears throat> we have those who are throughout the world right now soon engaging and every day as we, not just for those who are uh, on this occasion where we are during Ramadan or our Islamic holidays where we chant uh, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't leave our Islamic life just for holidays. Every single day we are vigilant Muslims. We are not those who make this masjid or any masjid like Masjid Dara, a place of, of confusion, of fitna. Let us make our whole society itself a heavenly society, brothers and sisters. Let us reflect on ourselves 
to work on making sure that this Hajj, that those who are engaging physically and those who are transporting time and space, who are right here in this moment, who are in their spiritual heart connected with their brothers and sisters, let us avoid that vain talk and bad speech. Let's develop better relationships with people, those who have broken bonds, those who have done us wrong, those who deserve the wrath, and those who you give mercy, Muhammad the prophet, when one could have easily deserved the wrath, extended mercy. To, have, to be merciful is to extend mercy in the moment. If someone comes here and lived a life of all sorts of challenges in the street, in the, in the culture, <clears throat> this should be a place and where it's inviting, not turning some away based off of what you might perceive as them not living up to your expectation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who deserves all praises and worship. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam represented goodness. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam represented a model example for us all to live by. Allah says in, in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuha nasu, excuse me, Ya ayyuha nas, inna khalaqanaku min dhakri, Allah says in Surah Al Hujurat, brothers and sisters, O mankind, indeed we have created you from a male and from a female. Ya Yuanas, inna khalaqanakum min dhakri wa unta, and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Liti arafu. Etc. And in this verse in Surah Al Hujurat, it is a time of getting to know one another, but it is a time to getting one another in a deep relationship of reflection, of knowing one another. The same way that these rituals that we develop, but too much ritualism, brothers and sisters, can take us off from the path. Our great leader and teacher, Imam Warthi Muhammad, 21st century intellectual, said too much ritualism can miss the objective of what it is, the purpose of what we need to have in this life. The rituals point us to something bigger. The rituals point us to something as the Islamic tradition, the muqasa to sharia, they point us to something higher, but there's symbolism in the rituals, but not to stay stuck in the rituals. Allah says in the Quran, you can stay and you can make prayer standing on the side, etc. Allah knew the development of what we would have where we have a modern car, a electrical car, etc. So brothers and sisters, apply Islam in its practical use. Let your behavior be a model example. And Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, in a hadith, hadith Qudsi says, Qalb al-mu'min bayt al-rab, the heart of the believer is the house of the Lord. Dear beloved believers, Muslims, people of the heart, we must establish, and those of us who are here in the United States of America, our goal is to establish an authentic Islam that respects our rich tradition with over 40 plus nationalities here represented here in the nation's capital. That representation is one built off of a collective engagement with all of those beautiful expressions. It is also rooted in a long-standing indigenous form of Islam through various struggles of civil rights and activism that is rooted in the historical African-American community as well. But it is that collective connection as we are embodying this day of Arafah, of knowing one another. We have to sit to our fellow brothers and sisters and understand them, listen, reflect, sometimes not say anything at all. If I went to Egypt right now, the imam of the masjid would be Egyptian. If I went to Dubai right now, it's a cosmopolitan of 80, 85% 80, individuals from all sorts of nationalities and maybe 10 to 15% indigenous Emirati. In the United States of America to itself, this collective experience has to cultivate what I could consider a model example, model Muslim community in the wildernesses of North America. How is that done? It is done by It is not a marathon, excuse me, it is not a sprint, 
to marathon. Brothers and sisters, a successful Muslim American culture must produce itself on its own terms based off of our own reality in the United States itself. The great Imam, as I mentioned before, said, understand the rise and fall of Islamic civilization. Understand your social history as well. As young people, those who are here in this audience, it's important to study the works of Imam Shatabi, Imam Sara Dawi, the works of Imam Jazuli, Maliki Fiqh, Hanafi Fiqh, etc., Jafari Fiqh, etc. But also understand the development of Islam in America through Islamic lenses cultivated, rooted in the classical tradition, but it has its own expression here. And so those of us, those of you all who are visiting us, as one of my friends said recently, Islam is not a government, it's a faith. Islam is not a state, it's a message. Why do we say this? The Islam expressed all throughout the Islamic world comes in different forms, different shapes, different expression. For those of us who have lived in the United States of America, who were given instructions to then when we studied abroad, don't become someone else. My father gave me perfect instruction. I said this last Juma Kutba, and I've said this a few other times. When I studied in the Middle East, when I studied in West Africa, my father gave me instruction as the Imam of the Masjid. He said, Muhammad, extract the knowledge, but do not become someone else. Brothers and sisters, did you hear me? And this is proper khutba. Extract the knowledge from various locations of the world. At the time, Islam, go as far as to China. At that time, China was part of uh, the broader expansion effort of the known world. Go there and extract the knowledge. We've gotten much of great contribution because of Chinese traditional medicine, Chinese contribution, etc. But for all of us throughout the world, learn from the tradition that's developing right here in the United States. Learn the example of what interfaith, intrafaith dialogues being cultivated here. Learn the development of Islamic thought being cultivated here. And don't see your Islam as secondary. Don't let someone else tell you that your Islam is, is, is the form of some Islamic expression because you live in the West. Be bold. Offer your own form of isla, ihya. The contribution of Imam Ghazali in his ihya was beautiful. He talks about in his kitab, in, in, in, the, in, in a section, there's a kitab, Adab al suhba a book on understanding the, the, uh, the adab of companionship right next to a section of adab of saluk, of seclusion. But that full combination also points to a section in that ihya. Remember reading it as a young child. He talks about this kitab al-maut, the book of death. And that, that compilation, we're all going toward death, brothers and sisters. Don't despair in surah al-maut. Uh, Allah gives us instructions. And as our great teacher in 1807, Omar ibn Said, Yaro Mahmud, these great Islamic thinkers who arrived on these shores in America, who've left, uh, left us bodies and treaties themselves, who left us with these verses of Quran, he who created death and life, for Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. He wrote this, one of our great Islamic thinkers here in the United States. So what am I saying, brothers and sisters? Be courageous and be comfortable and your Islamic expression in the United States of America. Recognize it is a time for everyone to get to know one another, not just the Islamic thought coming from the broader Muslim world, but you are part of that broader extension as well. Muhammad the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knew that there would be Muslims in this United States of America. Let Islam be that kindling flame for all of us. Let it be a moment of excitement. Let it stay be a moment of excitement for when it came, it was exciting, and it will, as this complete unfolding takes place, let it also completely change ourselves. Let it change our heart so we are radically different human beings. Don't be comfortable in your Islam as status quo. Let your Islam be a kindling flame to master whatever tradition, whatever skills that you have learned 
to go out into the world so when someone sees you, whether your name is Brian, whether your name is Abdul, whether you have a, a, a, a, an apparent Muslim name or not, they see your character. They see your example and they say, that's something different. That person represents that model man, Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dear beloved believers, as we close in this dua, <clears throat> Oh Allah, I cannot manage this life myself without you. Please make of my life what you want it to be, what you for, refer it to be. Do not allow me to act on my own. Help me to act only in obedience to you, Allah. We hear and we obey. Submit na wa ta'na. Forgive us. We are asking your forgiveness. Allahumma afni fi badini. Allahumma afni fi samia. Allahumma afni fi basri. La ilaha illallah anta. O oh Allah, grant health in my body. O oh Allah, grant health in my hearing. O oh Allah, grant health in my sight. There is no God worthy of being worshipped except you, O oh Allah. Ikamati sada. We intend to make two rakas for Salat al Jumma for Allah, the most high face in the Kaaba. In fact, uh, my friend Imam Intepli, please, Fadl. I haven't seen uh, my friend Imam Antepli in a long time, and I'd like him to lead this a lot. Please, Father. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموات من الأموات والأنفس والسمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المحتدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allahu Ekber Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Errahmanir Rahim Maliki Yevmiddin İyyâke na'budu ve iyyâke nesta'in İhdinas sıratel mustakîm Sıratel lezîne en'amte aleyhim Veyril mağdubi aleyhim veled dallîn Sübhanellezî esrâ bi'abdihî leylem minel mescidil harâmi ilel mescidil aksâ إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير وآتينا موسى الكتاب وجعلناه هدى لبني إسرائيل لبني إسرائيل ألا تتخذوا من دوني وكيلا ذرية من حملنا مع نوح إنه كان عبدا شكورا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Ekber Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber You are a man of incredible grace, Habibi. I was just to see you. That's very kind of you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to ask my brother, Imam uh, Antepli, to stay close by because I want us to hear from him in just a minute. He's facilitating uh, the delegation that's here, a group from international students that the, the uh, State Department is hosting. And I want him to make some comments and greet the community as well. I want to thank uh, Professor uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Frazier Rahim. A uh, wonderful talk on this day of artifact. Very appropriate that he uh, quoted uh, from the Quran, uh, Hujurat, that mentions uh, Lita Arafu, Lita Arafu, uh, which in that is uh, where you find Arafat. Arafat, also the root word. And Lita Arafu, uh, meaning to know. Uh, but it doesn't mean just to get to know each other. It also means it's in the, it's in the measure that says it should be going back and forth, which says that you should know yourself. Allah wants you to know yourself, so when you get to know other people, you will share something of yourself with them. And like he said in his kutbah, if you go to other people and you become them, then you give up what Allah gave you for them to benefit from your experience and how he raised you and, and, and took you to certain experiences. So lita arafu means so you will know yourself and have something to share as you get to know others uh, as well. So don't lose yourself as you get to know other people. 
So this is a Dale artifact, very appropriate. Uh, we thank uh, our professor uh, for that as well. Uh, we know tomorrow we'll be commemorating our, our blessed day, uh, uh, Eid, uh, Eid celebration. Uh, that'll take place here uh, starting at uh, 9 a.m. We're gonna, we got the block gonna be shut down. We're gonna invite the whole community out. Uh, we're gonna have the block lined up with different types of vehicles for games, foods, et cetera, uh, for the youth uh, as well. So please come by, stop by, uh, enjoy yourself, and in particular in the, uh, in the day as well. Uh, immediately after Juma, not immediately after, but at 3 o'clock, the sisters will be doing a henna party uh, at 3 p.m. Next, next door. So I want to make sure that uh, you all are aware of that and support uh, that event uh, as well. Uh, it says, uh, due to rain, we will be having prayer and food giveaway uh, only on Saturday. So due to rain, we will be having prayer and food giveaway only on Saturday. So depending on what happens on the rain uh, tomorrow, that's the announcement. Uh, and then it's vending, children's activities, entertainment. Uh, based on the situation, will be Sunday, Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, so a lot of the activities I, was, I spoke about are going to take place, looks like, on Sunday uh, as well. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, we're still working to try to get the building expanded. We're still about 10% short of what we need uh, for the project. We're still working with the city back and forth on some technicalities. Uh, one office left basically to get the permit. Once we get things cleared up with that office, then of course we're getting things poised to begin uh, expanding the facility, which is going to double, double the size uh, of the facility. We have an upcoming membership meeting taking place on July the 24th at 1230, and then you get all the updates, all the details on all the information uh, that, that's going on. Uh, we're going to be hosting uh, the Time to Be Grateful Banquet. It's going to be its 19th annual award ceremony weekend that take place here in December. Uh, it's going to also coincide with the anniversary of the United Nations issuing a Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is also the same date that this building that we're in right now uh, was dedicated on that same day uh, to say as a people, as he mentioned, the indigenous here, who were denied all of those rights uh, on that declaration, uh, proponents for all those rights for everybody around the world. Uh, that's what one of the things this represent in this message and having that dedication on that particular date. Uh, so make sure you get ready to sign up uh, for the Time to Be Grateful event uh, as well. Uh, Sunday, uh, 7.30, we're going to have Muhammad Ali's former wife, uh, Dr. Uh, Khalila Ali. She'll be here uh, to speak about the road to greatness of Muhammad Ali. So that'll be before Maghrib. We'll end that with Maghrib. Uh, again, that'll be Sunday, 7.30, uh, here at the Masjid. Uh, that's in partnership with Muslim Voices for Peace uh, as well. And I think uh, we're good. I'm going to have my dear brother. Uh, he's also a professor at Duke University. Again, he's facilitating this, uh, this delegation from several countries, and I'll let him give the greetings and make some comments. Thank you so very much, Brother Imam. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. As our leader and brother mentioned, I am here with the State Department Interfaith Youth Delegation, a college student from several countries, Muslim, Hindu, and otherwise. Uh, they are here to explore and study American religious pluralism. And what a better place, the, the bright spot of Islam and religious landscape in America that we brought them into Masjid Muhammad. Thank you very much for this very gracious invitation. And thank you for welcoming my community over here. I brought the greetings and salams of North Carolina Muslims where I live as well. May Allah include your prayers, your du'as into the prayers of those who pray today in Jabal al-Rahmah and accept them all inshallah ta'ala. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and special thanks to my brother and mentor, Brother Muhammad Fraser, for the beautiful khutbah and message. Assalamu alaikum and Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Again, I just want to make it clear now, the festivity, we're going to do the prayer uh, tomorrow and food giveaway, but all the activities that I mentioned in terms of shutting the block down with all the vehicles for the children and the food, that'll take place on Sunday. Again, this is because of the rain forecast for tomorrow. Uh, so pass that word. So prayer uh, tomorrow and food giveaway tomorrow, but all the activities will be Sunday here at this location. We're going to shut the block down and invite the whole community out to participate in these celebrations. Assalamu alaikum.